Good morning, church. Good morning. Boy, can you feel the energy in the room? It is very exciting today. We are in the midst, and we're going to have a play. But today, today is the third Sunday of Advent, which is the Joy Sunday, and it's Gaudate Sunday. So let's say that word together. Gaudate, which is just the Latin word for joy. So let's say it again. Gaudate. Gaudate. All right. And if you are wearing an ugly sweater or a Christmas sweater that other people have called adorable, raise your hand. <laughs> this is part of our Gaudate experience. I like mine. There we go. It is fun to be together today. It is joyful to be together today. And uh, welcome to worship. I'm going to invite Faith forward to bring us our announcements. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. You are a good looking group. And those of you that have never been here before or haven't been here for 40 years, that's Pastor Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. Hi. <laughs> And I'm Faye Kirkus, I'm the lay leader, and uh, this announcement gig started during COVID. Didn't everything start during COVID? Maybe. It was on film, and then it hasn't stopped, so here we go. We are mission people. Say that. We, we are, are mission people. people. Because People's Pantry is this Tuesday. Yes. A Christmas giveaway, and um, we don't have an idea how many will show up, but we're probably planning for 150. And we can use some volunteers. If you've never volunteered before, let me know, and I can tell you all about that, if you would like, on Monday or Tuesday. Um, we have folks at home watching, and probably a lot of you that are in the play notified your friends and family. So we welcome you all to worship with the United Methodist Church of Rancho Cordova. Check your cell phones and sign in in the red book that's in the pew in front of you or alongside you. Pass that down. Take a look at the names there and introduce yourself to some visitors and new folks today. We're so glad you're here. So we have a busy week ahead of us. There is still one Sunday worship before Christmas, and that's next Sunday. We get a double opportunity to worship Sunday. There'll be the morning worship, just like we are today. And there'll be a 7 o'clock Christmas Eve service that ends up out at the live nativity. And so we hope you can join for one or both of those. We'd love to see you. And there will be different services. That, oh, yeah, and there's going to be a different message in each one. You know, some, oh, you think, music. oh, that covers it. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Have, have it all. Have it all. And um, a double uh, offering, too, so be ready for that. <laughs> Always, always that. Yeah, here we go. It's a good thing you have, you remember the old Christmas clubs? Um, maybe they still have those. I, I don't know, it's been a long time where you paid money every month oh, and yeah. then you got the check in December. And uh, there must be something like that for some folks. Today after church, come on over and enjoy some fellowship and refreshments. And then uh, there will be the drop-off zone for things for the People's Pantry. If you didn't bring it with you this morning, you can come back through 1230 to 3, and we'd love to receive your donations. Um, we've been sending out emails to let you know what it is that we are in need of, but we can use just the, all the regular things of jelly and cereal and eggs and bread and things like that. So whatever you can drop off, that would be great. Tomorrow morning at 9.30 is the prep for the People's Pantry. Tuesday is coming to set up at 9 o'clock for the People's Pantry. We're having an audit on Tuesday. So um, a double audit, one in the diaper program and one in our whole program where they'll be looking for um, food handling and safety issues and civil rights issues. and. Um, we welcome them to come because we are one great outfit. But um, don't, if we tell you you have to do something Tuesday, do it. <laughs> you know how those things go. <laughs> then on Wednesday, Barbara and her crew are preparing <coughs> to be our guest dinner. And um, she uh, would like some extra help in the afternoon on Wednesday if you can help talk to Barbara and let her know that you can come and give her a hand. Both of us send out emails and we ask people to tell us they're coming and they don't and then they do. Okay? So we count on you one way or the other. And then comes the postcard to the community and everybody in this room is invited to participate. 
Our live nativity will be on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday evenings, and it's presented from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m. out in front. You saw that the creche is up and ready to go and ready to receive us. The sign-up sheets for the nativity are in the hall over here and for the food for the nativity. So please sign up today and let us know what you, how you can help out. We need actors of all ages and all sizes and all bents of life. So come on down. We'll love to have you. This week, uh, we're going to sing Joy to the World this morning in our service. And I, uh, I have three affirmations taken from Joy to the World. I command my heart to repeat the sounding joy. I command my heart to repeat the sounding joy. God's blessings flow beyond, my, uh, beyond any obstacle, carving new paths through old hurts. My top priority this season is to prepare God room and experience to prepare God's room and experience the wonders of holy love. So this week, joy to the world for each of us. Two birthdays. Today is Clint Lowell's birthday. And Clint, if you're watching this, happy birthday to you. Everybody here is thinking of you and uh, says happy birthday. And then on Thursday, Carol Cooper has a birthday. Happy birthday, Carol, ahead of time. Enjoy your day. <clears throat> Tuesday night, Kay is in a concert a si with a singing her choral group. And the information is in Adams Hall there. She's also singing in the Rotunda tomorrow. So she has to miss people's pantry. And she has a, a what do they call that, an excused absence. <laughs> so um, it's a great, fun night to listen to that choral concert. And um, I think Donald sings along with her as well. Raise your hand, Donald. And Kay is right here. And Oh, yeah, and it's free. And there's refreshments afterwards. And they provide refreshments. It's great. Tuesday, it's at Arden Arcade Church, so not too far away. And um, let me see what else. If you brought toys today for Christmas in Cordova, the bin is over in Adams Hall. And if you still are going to bring some, we get them here in the next day or two because um, we need to get them out of the way of the pantry and also get them over to the families at the uh, police department. So uh, joy cannot be pursued. It comes from within. It's a state of being. It does not depend on circumstances, but triumphs over circumstances. It produces a gentleness of spirit and a magnetic personality. Billy Graham said that. So remember that each of us is an innkeeper who decides if there's room for Jesus. Make room this week. Have a great worship. Amen. Let me grab that from you. One last announcement. If you're interested in an eventide uh, service tonight at Arden Christian Church, I will be uh, soloing a couple of songs with the Advent theme of peace. <laughs> like, what, the, what songs am I singing? Oh, yeah. Um, so please join me in singing View the Present Through the Promise. You may rise or stay seated as the Spirit moves you.
may be seated. Isaiah wrote, The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. It shall be for all of God's people. No traveler shall ever go astray. And the beloved of the Lord shall return and come to Zion singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon them. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and all sorrow shall flee away. The prophet tells us about the joy of being in God's house and invites us to imagine being set free, unburdened to live in the grace and wonder of life itself, surrounded by those who love us. And then he tells us that the journey to get there is just as much a joy as the arrival. Yes, the Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. We invite Rachel, Corey, and Maggie to bring the light of the joy candle. So that means two purples and the pink one is the joy one. Because right, pink is joyful. We light the candles of hope and peace and joy as a sign to the world that as we hold on to hope, we will work for and practice the ways of peace, bringing joy wherever we go. A lot of fighting. <laughs> Please join me in singing the first three verses of Light the Advent Candle. one more time. Are you ready, Tom? Oh, there's always something. It's under construction there. <laughs> but this is uh, produced by the entire Hostan Kremsek Abdullah. Abdullah family and all of the kids who were kind of with us during the pandemic. And so um, this is a stop motion Christmas story. 
With permission of HarperCollins Christian Publishing, this nativity story is taken from the Rhyme Bible Storybook by L.J. Satgast, as told by the young people of the United Methodist Church of Rancho Cordova. Clip, clop, clip, clop. Clip, clop, clip, clop. Clip, clop, clip, clop. One little donkey, so fuzzy and gray, is on his way to Bethlehem town. Clip, clop, clip, clop. Clip, clop, clip, clop. Clip, clop, clip, Mary will ride and Joseph will walk. Both of them are too tired to talk. For the road is long and they cannot stop. Clip, clop, clip, clop. Clip, clop, clip, clop. Clip, clop, clip, clop. Clip, clop, clip, clop. The fuzzy gray donkey perked up his ears when Joseph cried, At last we're here! But oh, what a crowd, so noisy and loud. And where would they stay at the end of the day? Do you have room? Poor Joseph said, We've come so far. We really need a bed. But the busy innkeeper shook his head. Mary and Joseph turned away, but then they heard the innkeeper say, If you don't mind some cows and sheep, I have a place <coughs> where you can sleep. The fuzzy gray donkey was glad to stay beside the manger filled with hay. Moo! Said a cow. <laughs> said the sheep. Then everyone tried to get some sleep. And when the animals opened their eyes, there in the manger, to their surprise, a baby lay. It was baby Jesus, asleep on the hay, a gift from God on Christmas Day. Late one night, one quiet night, some shepherds sat by the flickering light, when all of a sudden, they saw something bright. What is it? They cried as they tried to hide, for it gave them such a terrible fright. But then they heard an angel say, Don't be afraid, for on this day, a baby was born on a bed of hay. And even though he is so small, this baby is the king of all. The shepherd heard a wonderful sound. The angels were singing all around. Glory to God. They sang, and then... Peace on earth, good will to men. The angels suddenly went away, and with them went the light of day. Once again, the night was still, and the moonlight shone on every hill. The shepherds quickly ran with joy to find the very special boy. At last they found where the baby lay, fast asleep upon the hay. Far away, one cold dark night, some wise men saw a strange new light. They looked at the sky and wondered why one star should be so big and bright. Then one of them said, the star must mean that something great is happening. A special king was born tonight, and that's the reason for this light. Then all of them cried, Let's, Let's follow the star, star. it may be near or it may be far. We'll we'll search until we find a place where we can see the baby's face. So off they went to follow the star. And was it near or was it far? Oh, it was far, so far away, but they traveled on, day after day. And then one night, the star shone down upon a house in Bethlehem town. And there they saw, to their delight, the reason for the shining light. The wise men's hearts were filled with joy as they bowed down before the boy. They gave their treasures to the king and went back home, still worshiping. that I'm going to oh, do right now. 
um, it's time for the joys and the prayers. On the prayer side of our book, um, Martha has asked us for prayers for her friend Christine Cervantes. She's been missing since Friday the 15th. Prayers for her husband, Matt, and daughter Cameron. And um, Tom's going to put a picture up um, so you can see. It was it up? Okay. Oh Lord, hear my prayers. Prayers for the family of Chris McGinnis, his wife Vicki, and children Chava and Sam at a sudden passing, dear friends of Kimberly Cole. Oh Lord, hear my prayers. For the Ukraine, Gaza, Israel, and all places of war, we implore you, Lord, for the intervention and peace. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. Please join me in the uh, unison prayer. Holy One, sometimes we need to be reminded that the world does not revolve around us. On this day of love, strip away our self-centered pride and help us to stand before you empty-handed and open-hearted. This way we begin to make room for you. Fill us with the courage to sing your song and proclaim the love of Jesus, which is more powerful than all of the wealth and ego and pride in this world. Hear us as we pray the words Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in the invitation to the offering. All that we have, all that we are, all that we hope to be, we give to you, Lord of life. Amen. I'm going to invite our ushers forward to receive our tithes and offerings today. offerings and for the gift of our lives. May we offer ourselves in your service. May we serve our community. May we honor you as we prepare our hearts for Jesus' birth. We ask this all in his beloved name. Amen. Amen.
All right, it is my pleasure, distinct pleasure. Oops, I'm not going to introduce this until I read you the scripture. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to just introduce that play and get right off. But no, I'm here. So this is from Isaiah, but I think it might be from Jeremiah. I think we printed this wrong. That would be my apology. I thought we'd corrected that. Oh, well, let's go with Isaiah because it says it two places. <laughs> Shout, a full-throated shout, hold nothing back, a trumpet blast shout, tell my people what's wrong with their lives, face my family Jacob with their sins, they're busy, busy, busy at worship and love studying all about me. To all appearances, they're a nation of right-living people, law-abiding, God-honoring, and they ask me, what's the right thing to do? and love having me on their side. But they also complain. Why do we fast and you don't look our way? Why do we humble ourselves and you don't even notice? Well, here's why. The bottom line on your fast days is profit. You drive your employees much too hard. You fast, but at the same time you bicker and fight. You fast, but you swing a mean fist. This is the kind of fast I'm after, says the prophet to break the chains of injustice, to get rid of exploitation in the workplace, to free the oppressed, to cancel debts. What I'm interested in seeing you do is share your food with the hungry, invite the homeless poor into your homes, put clothes on the shivering ill-clad, being available to your own families. Do this and the lights will turn on, friends, and your lives will turn around at once. Your righteousness will pave your way. The God of glory will secure your passage. Then, when you pray, God will answer. You'll call out for help, and I'll say, here I am. If you get rid of unfair practices, quit blaming victims, quit gossiping about other people's sins, if you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourselves to the down and out, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Your shadowed lives will be bathed in sunlight. You'll be like a well-watered garden, a gurgling spring that never runs dry. Words of God, words of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Friends, this text, if you remember last week and I was talking about how peace can't come without justice rolling down like water, that's what this text is all about. There's no peace until this kind of justice is lived out. And so today we get to have a bit of a parable, I think it is, right, Carol? Written by Carol Good, our sermon time today really is about um, focusing our lives toward God's goodness in this world and living it out. So I present to you, what is it called? I didn't bring up my, a cold and stormy night. You'd think I'd have that memorized by now. All right, friends. Except it was a cold and stormy night. Our story takes place along a lonely road in Northern California. The road branches off from the interstate and far enough that very few cars were on the road. Houses were few and far between. Actually, it was pretty dark too, since there was no moon out and the storm was rolling in with big black thunderclouds, completely blotting out the stars or wherever they may be. The only light on this stretch of road was at the tiny cornfield motel, neon lights flashing in the dark. It was owned and run by the Moody family. Their living quarters were attached off the office, which sometimes served hot coffee and donuts to visitors checking in. On this particular night, the vacancy sign was on, but only one room still remained vacant. Unfortunately, it had been a very stressful year for the Moody family. 
and finances were very tight. Behind the motel was a cornfield and a barn, also owned by the Moody family. The corn crop surrounding the motel was poor that year, and business at the motel was slow. Whenever the interstate was built a few years ago, the tourist traffic that typically ran along the road was diverted to the new freeway. And there was a drastic downturn in their motel business. <laughs> You could say that the Moody family was near bankruptcy, and this Christmas, the family was on edge. Their daughter, Dusty, was due home from college for the holidays. And this is where our story begins. This place is a mess. I'm so tired of all this work. Oh my goodness, can't you at least clean up your own ashes? <laughs> oh, Mama, you're gonna wear yourself out. I am already worn out. Well, there's so much to do, and Christmas right around the corner, Dusty's gonna come home anytime. I don't even know if we have the money for our big Christmas breakfast. Oh, come on, like, isn't there like a half of a leftover ham in the in the cellar and remember all those canned tomatoes we can that's spring? what you want to feed them for christmas breakfast ham and tomatoes oh they're gonna love that mm. i just forget i just wish you'd help once in a while okay okay i'll tell you what i i will wash the dishes if um you'll take care of the toilets Cleaning the toilets. <laughs> what, what am I, like a scullery maid? Why don't you do the toilets? I'll do the dishes. Um, I don't know how to do toilets. Can't we just You don't look, know how to do toilets? Look, I'm you just certainly to made the mess her. pretty good in them. Look, can you just let me do the Your dishes? Your whole life you've never done a toilet. I love them. <laughs> Please join us now, and God, how can we forgive? <laughs> have really played havoc with their family. Coupled with the financial situation and the busyness of the holidays coming, emotions have exploded into chaos. And now, their daughter has come home to all this tension. Yes, and Dusty has just come off of a very stressful week of exams. She has not done well in college this semester and has been thinking of quitting. It's too much pressure. Plus, she and her longtime boyfriend, Buster, have just broken up. Well, actually, Buster broke it off. A demoralizing event, and she has not been handling it well. Ma, Pops, what's going on? 
Oh, we were just... Welcome home, honey. <laughs> yeah, honey, we were just cleaning, you know. What? Well, I was cleaning. He was arguing. I wasn't arguing. You're, you started the argument. Oh, I thought you, you just were, always make such a big thing a about big, cleaning up. Well, it's a big thing when just, you're the only one that does it. Just, Stop! Just, Ma, I brought you something. Oh. oh, oh, it's your dirty laundry. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hey. We have vacancy. Awesome. Thanks, partner. Uh, it's a fierce one out there, man. Me and my bike were just about to freeze up. Thank goodness for your sign. Can't see anything out there with the storm clouds and everything. You still got a room for the night? Well, we have, we have one left. I'll take it. Okay. Come over here and sign, sign this. Just, uh... Butch? Just, just Butch? Yep, given to me by my own sweet mama. Heck of a name. Yeah. Hey, Pops, we got any donuts and hot coffee left? Yeah, want some? Oh, that sounds good. It's gonna be a brutal storm out there. It's so dark, you can't barely see a thing. Thank goodness for your sign. There's not too many people out this way, is there? No, we're hurting for business. First night all year, we had no vacancy. Oh, well, that's too bad. I'll bet that new interstate really, really messed up business for you, huh? You bet. Well, you have a real nice place here, and uh, I'd hate to see you lose it. Times are tough for a lot of folks. And uh, it's right cozy in here, you know? I can tell you really worked hard to fix this place up. You know, years ago, I came through here, there was nothing but cornfields. And in hard times, it's good to be thankful for the little things. Why, you've got a nice son here, a <coughs> daughter. And I understand she's a college student. You should be real proud. <laughs> These donuts are delicious, and this coffee is fantastic. I'm so glad I found you when I did. Just that storm is getting crazy. There's no vacancy. Can't you read the sign? <laughs> Please join us in singing Change My Heart, O oh God.
Pepper, it's so cool. I want to go back to Alabama. It's warmer there. Yeah, and I miss my friends. We can't go back. We've come all this way. We will have a new home soon. Well, I'm sorry the car had to break down. At least we made it this far. Oh, it was old and just junky anyway. <laughs> well, it was running. It just wasn't used to all this cold weather. Maybe we can get it running again. Yeah, but where are we going to stay in the meantime? It's so dark out here. And I'm so scared. Me too. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll find some place. <coughs> so, the storm is raging outside, and the Mello family is in a dilemma. Their car has quit running and is in a snowbank somewhere down the road. The family trudged along until they saw the Cornfield Motel sign flashing in the darkness. Papa Mello had lost his job in the coal mines of Alabama, where his family had been mining for over a hundred years. With four children, grandpa and grandma, their family of eight could not be sustained. They left the state in the fall with hope to arrive in Northern California before all the winter storms. Seems like their car, however, didn't quite make it and got stuck in a snowbank. They had not prepared for stormy weather. Now, they found themselves in on foot in an early thunderstorm, the wind whipping around their thin sweaters and their hungry and cold. Papa Mello had heard that there was work in the lumber mill up north, or cleaning up after summer fires which ravaged the state. Mama and Grandpa, or Mama and Grandma were good at gardening. Grandpa had a knack with horses and leather work, and the kids were helpers too, and learning that hard work had benefits for the whole family. But that was in Alabama, and this was Northern California, where they had never been before. So, back at the motel, things became eerily quiet. Butch and Dusty somehow couldn't eat any more donuts. <laughs> Finally, Dusty spoke up. <coughs> Dad, this is Christmas? Yeah. So what? Mm, Christmas. You know, at my house, we always sang Christmas carols. I think my favorite was, Joy to the I world and the moon. Oh. Laundry's done. Did I hear the doorbell? Got, we got another customer? Yeah, but we've got no more room. No vacancy. People don't read signs these days. I frustrated. But fam but Pops, it's a family with kids, grandparents, and old people. <laughs> Good grief, we've got no more room. Well, we've got the barn out back, Papa. You know, old Bossy's out there stays pretty warm in the hay, I think. And, you know, I mean, anything's better than the storm. And did you see there's like little kids and old people? <laughs>
household is in a quandary. What to do? No one feels like this is Christmas. But finally, Mama speaks up with a determined voice. Well, anything is better than leaving them out there in the cold. You know, the barn will just have to do. Hey, guys, there's kids and, and grandparents out there in the cold, in the storm. I'll take the barn, let them have my room. Call them in. Hey guys, come back in. We have some room for you. Guys, this is my sock for Santa Phil. But Mama, Sam won't know where we are. Well, honey, I know. Maybe he'll figure it out. <laughs> Kids, would you like to hear a story? Yeah, we love stories! Alright, well, this is a story of a long, long time ago very, very far away. It's about a family who had traveled a long way and they had no place to stay because there was no room for them anywhere. And they like us, huh? Well, yes, except the parents, they had no kids yet. But the mom was nine months pregnant and she was about to have her baby very, very soon. And so it was really important for them to find a warm place to stay. Finally, a kind innkeeper let them have the stable in the back. It wasn't an ideal place, but it would be warm. And so later that night, the mama had her baby, a sweet baby boy, and they wrapped him up and laid him in the hay. Um, laid him in the hay. <laughs> later that night, there were, there were visitors because they had heard that the baby boy had been born and that he would grow up to be a very, very special man. And so they came to bring him presents and honor him. If I was there, I would also bring him presents, too. All right. Let me, let me tell you about these visitors. In the, in the fields at night, there were shepherds, and they were watching the animals. And it was real dark, just like it is tonight. And there was also these other guys. They were called wise men. They came, and they brought gifts and all this different stuff.
houses on a crisp new day. Everyone has slept well, and the children have discovered a fresh blanket of snow on the ground. This was the first time the mellow children have seen snow, and their excitement could hardly be contained. The Moody family wakes with a new sense of energy, too. Mama can't wait to put the ham and tomatoes on the stove. <laughs> and the house now has a delicious smell emanating from the kitchen. Papa is anxious to get up and help in the kitchen. It's like he somehow feels newly inspired. Dusty gets up and is busy folding the laundry. Everyone somehow feels that there is a new, strange goodness in the air. Christmas carols. My favorite is Joy to the World. Let's sing. But first, we have ham and tomatoes for breakfast. <laughs> we love ham and tomatoes. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everyone.
Both the Moody and Mellow families celebrated together that cold Christmas morning. After breakfast, Mama Moody found some old jackets she had tucked away and dressed the children all warmly so they could go and play in the fresh snow. Later, Dusty and Papa Moody helped the Mellow family get their car going so they could be on their way. Finally, goodbyes were said with promises to keep in touch and meet again when the time was right. And somehow, at least for this new day, a sense of despair was replaced by the warm glow of the Christmas spirit. It really was the best Christmas ever. And so I invite you to participate in the People's Pantry, be a part of the dinner on Wednesday night, do something, something that envelops and welcomes somebody in. So go in peace. May you know the love of Christ surrounding you. May you understand that God loves you beyond measure and that the Holy Spirit is all around us, stirring in us and calling us to a new thing. Amen.